So we're on to the second chapter of our series on Doug John Hall's What Christianity Is Not. Hall believes that we can't really say what Christianity is because God is bigger than our understanding. But maybe we'll get close through a sort of constant process of elimination. This week he's saying that we are not a religion of the book. And I think it's fitting that we're talking about this on the Sunday that we usually talk about the Magi visiting Jesus. These were people completely removed from the Israelite tradition who were searching for a Messiah. They learned about Jesus entirely through studying the environment. They had no scriptures of their own in terms of the Hebrew scriptures. And when they did arrive in Israel, the Israelite authorities used scripture as a weapon to hunt down and try to kill Jesus. And in so doing, they had all the male babies under two years old killed. It was the people who didn't have the book that had the right idea, and the people who had the book who felt threatened. So back to Hall. He actually spends a lot of time talking about church history in order to explain, in his view, how we got where we are. Basically, he says that the moderate and left side, left wing side of the church has left the biblical conversation. The scholars are still doing it, but the people have left the conversation. Meanwhile, the right wing side of the church is always frantically searching for authority. This has led to a culture of reading scripture without context, mistakenly seeing its roots in the Reformation. Let's dig in a little further. The thing to remember about the Reformation is that the church prior to that was a very top-down model and had become very corrupt. It was, it was a sort of a corruptible system. The Bible was in Latin, which few average people understood, and sometimes even priests didn't have access to it. It also meant that those at the top got to control the message. This probably offends our sensibilities today, but in those days, the church's responsibilities were quite varied, and they were dealing with a very different context. It became corrupt, arguably good reasons for doing that in the first place. Uh, it would have been a much more mystical system and entwined in our daily life than today, so biblical teaching was just a small part of it. Now, Luther and the Reformers had two jobs to do. One was give the Bible to the people, and the other was to show the new reform, uh, yeah, Reformed Church as being distinct from the Roman Catholic Church. So the Bible was translated into everyday language and distributed. Then, most of them being university professors, the church took a very academic turn. The Reformed Church was very heavily based on the university system, in order to educate people, but also simply look very different than the church a good deal of Europe had just left. It's worth noting, too, that giving the Bible to the people and giving them the tools to read it was a way of exposing the corruption of the church. If the people could read the Bible, it took power away from the people trying to control the message. So when we look back at the Reformation, the message is Bible, 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 Bible. The authority is the Bible. And not the church, not the priest, not your neighbor, not your boss, the Bible. And you could read it yourself. So you fast forward 300 years, 200 years, depending, to the European settlement of North America, particularly in the United States. The Puritans were fleeing religious persecution and trying to find a place to start a new religiously based community. This would have been a little earlier. Additionally, back in Europe, it was mostly state churches with maybe one or two alternatives, so you didn't have a lot of choice. But here, everyone brought their state church with them, so there's churches from all over Europe. Plus, they started their own denominations and they were merging and splitting, and everyone, the options were plentiful, and, and the emphasis was on the individual. 
This was the land of opportunity, and you too needed to be a biblical scholar. Not only are you able to be a biblical scholar, but you need to be able to discern which choice of many is the right one. This is a group of people that is going to find a lot of inspiration from the Reformation. But North America was different from the Reformation in a few key ways. For one, there was this sort of fever pitch in search of authority. In North America, we need to find what makes us special in a sea of denominations, and that leads to splitting hairs. We rejected nuance for approachability because here everyone could be a biblical scholar. Modern media simplified things further when we needed quippy sounding sound bites rather than long dissertations. And meanwhile, we got this weird obsession with science. Things like evolution made us very uncomfortable, but our reaction was to try and use meticulous scientific approaches to Prove the unprovable. Hall's words are that we tried to out-science science. And all that left led to a rift between the center and uh, center left of the church and the right of the church. And the left being uncomfortable with conflict basically left the conversation. So now largely the right is in control of the message on scripture, while the left keeps growing more and more uncomfortable with that message. Now, the Reformers had similar motivations, but they were in a completely different context, which allowed them a lot more freedom. For instance, Luther was very much an Old Testament guy, and he spent much of his life translating and retranslating it into everyday language. In fact, he said that the Old Testament is the only one that we should be called, calling Holy Scripture, the reason being that that's what the New Testament called it, and nothing called the New Testament Holy Scripture. But Luther's interpretation of the Old Testament was incredibly allegorical. In fact, it was so allegorical that even left-wing scholars today are uncomfortable with it. Just think about that. And Luther had no problem excluding large portions of Scripture. He had no time for apocalyptic writing, and he had zero use for the book of James. He just discounted it. Luther knew the Bible so well that he had no problem playing fast and loose with it. Something that would bring horror to, much of us, to many of us today. So we're probably sufficiently confused at this point because Hall thinks the Bible is important, but he's also saying we're not people of the book. What gives? Well, he's got seven points that we could stand to learn from the time of Reformation. One, the, biblic the Bible and sustained study of the Bible are essential to Christian life and mission. The Bible is incredibly important to what we do. Two, the Bible is understood as a means, not as an end. In other words, it is important, but it is not the be-all and the end-all. It is a tool to get to God that we often treat as God itself. Three, the term word of God should not be unqualifiedly applied to the Bible. In other words, the written word bears witness to God's living word, but it's not God's living word itself. Four, the biblical testimony to the word of God is inspired. But this inspired testimony cannot by itself inspire us. In other words, the original scribes of the Bible were inspired by the Holy Spirit. But so are we today as we read it. The Bible is not locked in the 5th century 
just because that's when we voted it into canon. Five. There are choices to be made always between the more and less authoritative portions of Scripture. Translation itself is an art, and the Bible is a collection of religious texts from a wide variety of contexts for a wide variety of purposes. The Reformers made no bones about choosing which they thought were more important than others, and Hall says we shouldn't either. And six, listening to the Bible always includes listening to the zeitgeist. Our goal is not to rebuild first century culture, nor is church a mere history class. We are reading the Bible as a way to understand today, and that requires educating ourselves about today. It also means our understanding will change with the times. Karl Barth famously said, we do theology with the Bible in one hand, and the newspaper in the other. I think I said seven. I meant six. Anyway, so are we people of the book or not? Paul is saying that we need to take the book very seriously, and frankly, that we haven't been. But if we take it too seriously, it becomes a problem. It becomes a tool for power, because who gets to say whose interpretation is right? It becomes a weapon, just like it did with Herod and the chief priests. Meanwhile, that didn't have the. Uh, meanwhile, people that didn't have the book in the first place, the Magi, were the ones that really figured things out. If we're people of the book, it can become a weapon, or an idol, or both but it's the thing that tells us to believe in God and the tool that helps us work on what we're going through right now. And if we absent ourselves from that conversation because we're uncomfortable, as the center and left wing of the church have, then it allows people we likely disagree with to control the message. Amen.